martial art was jiu-jitsu. I started that when I was around like 14 years old. I was looking to like, I guess like start working out and start training for the military. So my uncle, he was training martial arts and he was working out all the time. So I, I did like my first jiu-jitsu class. I never fell in love with it right away. Hey, I'm Bobby Winther. I'm fighting December 15th on Cape Orders 165 at the Sukhani Casino. So I was primarily doing a bunch of other like team-based sports, um, and I didn't really have any sports that were like just me. Like, like I had the outcome, like and the win or the loss depended on me specifically. So that was something that was really, really different than that. You can't replicate it anywhere else. Like kind of like when you first learn you're losing like all the time, and I think like, this is when like people decide if like they like martial arts or not, and eventually you start getting you start getting submitted a little bit less or a little bit less than the day before, and then you start submitting people. So um, it was I think that's either a mindset this like that you either have or you don't have it really. I got my blue belt at 16, left the military at 17, but then I decided I wanted to pursue fighting as a career professionally and grappling professionally as well. So I decided to move out to San Diego uh, and then it kind of all changed when I met Fritz. I started by watching the UFC um, by accident. I was looking for a WWF video. Uh, I started off in MMA, which, which is Shudo in Guam. It was a gym called the Purebred. It's an inner way or Baron Nishida, all of them come from that same lineage. Shudo is basically MMA. It's, it's, there's grappling and striking. Uh, more emphasis on grappling, but I just like to strike. So I started mainly as a striker, kind of learning the different gyms, boxing, kickboxing, kind of just picking it up that way. How did that meet Bobby? He originally met Coach Charles down on the base, right? And then uh, kind of had a correspondence with him. And uh, when he decided he wanted to become a professional fighter, he moved out here and took the steps to become one. There's a few things with striking that uh, take time to get good at and that's with everybody. The way Bobby and I work good is um, he's a student. You know, uh, it doesn't matter what it is, striking, grappling. If you tell him something, he's gonna try it and he's gonna make it his. That's probably why he's so good, you know. All of our offense is from our defense, right? Defense, counter, pretend to be the jet. The first day he showed up, we have a spar this monster. Uh, some really big dude that everybody knows around here is a tough dude that just kind of beats up on people. And uh, you could tell he didn't really want to, but we told him to. And he went after it, and I could see then like you're not gonna you're not gonna back him down. I don't know, he doesn't care how much skill or size you have. And that showed me that he has that you know dog in him that everybody talks about. You know. Some of the stuff that Vince has been able to show me is like obviously the, the striking to mix it in with the grappling, but also just kind of like a way to look at specific problem sets. So the big, that's the biggest thing I get, my biggest takeaway is just the work ethic that he gets as being a martial artist and applying that to being a coach. <laughs> He's honestly been like that catalyst of bringing like all, all of us together uh, some of these guys have been with Vince before. Some of us had just kind of came into meeting him later. Like for instance, Alex Trinidad, who has been fighting with Vince, fighting underneath Vince uh, for like the last 11 years. He just recently retired, and they have just fought, they have they kind of just demonstrated like that's the kind of bond that they want the team to pursue, and uh, it really it's a great energy and feeds off to to the guys that are coming up, like myself, Enrique Marte. Anthony Orozco, it, the list kind of goes on right here. My name is Alex Trinidad, and I train at the Arena MMA here in San Diego. Coach Vicks uh, pretty much shaped me as a fighter. I didn't know anything before I got here other than wrestling. And even through all these years, he taught me everything, striking, grappling, wrestling. So he's been pretty much the biggest part of my career, personally. <laughs>
and everybody here at the gym. Try striking too. Like yeah. 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 Just like with all the guys, you know, Alex and everybody else, they all came with some kind of skill set. Uh, all I try to do is give them ideas on how to use what they got, their body types, their speed, their reaction time, things that they already have, but then just build a foundation in front of that, that they can tap into when it, the fight gets rough. That first fight, I was back in Virginia Beach at the time. I, really, I didn't know how to cut weight. I didn't really have any formal striking training whatsoever. I just had really just uh, just jujitsu and a little bit of wrestling, like not, not much. So honestly, I, I didn't have much going into that. So it was a terrible process. I got down to the weight and then I was like a, like a couple days before and then they canceled the fight. Step. The CDC will be screening passengers at three airports for a mysterious new virus. More than 200 now dead and nearly 10,000 confirmed cases. Fears continue to grow over the coronavirus. The United States has declared a public health emergency because of the coronavirus. That first fight, he always had the nerves, but same thing. Like we like to keep it playful. We we still the whole time even for the first one. Like it, it's still nerve wracking, but. That first one, I ended up being in the back for like, I think like eight hours or, or something. I didn't fight until like 2.30 in the morning and then we finished. Thank God we finished it fast. It was like, let's just get out here as soon as we can. <laughs> The same energy that you feel being nervous, you also feel with being excited too. So, and I always remind myself, like I, I fight because it's something I want to do and I want to demonstrate the skills myself and my team have been working on. But at the end of the day, there's no pressure. There's no pressure for me to to get a win for someone else. The win is for me. The win is for the for the gym ultimately. Just the beginning, man. Like I said, he's a student and he improves quick. From the first time to now, big improvement. Nobody thought he was gonna win most of his fights with his hands. You know, he's, his last fight he won on his feet. Having good partners like Alex and Anthony help him develop that wrestling has made him even more of a wrestler, uh, which people are gonna be surprised with his wrestling industry. Uh, he works with the best rappers in San Diego, the best wrestlers in San Diego, the best strikers in San Diego. For us, for everything, to just have a plan. If you go into something not having a plan and like things be new and like the first time you're experiencing and you don't have a plan on how you're gonna deal with that, that's when things fall apart. I just know that the experience with being uncomfortable and nervous, you just realize that like, all right, I'm used to this feeling. Like this is this is part of it. So, okay, I'm ready for it. All right, when it happens, I'm not surprised that it's happening. It's it's there, and and, and I'm fully embracing. It. December fifteenth. Uh, looking to. Do whatever we want. The striking's there, the grappling's there. Just here to kind of start leveling up each fight. And I don't want an easy fight. It doesn't do the team any good if I'm just taking easy fights. And it does, if I get to the UFC, it's not just gonna be because, because I took easy fights getting there. I want the challenge each and every time. So that way when, I'm, when I do make it to the UFC, I'm ready to be there and I'm ready to stay there. For this fight, my expectation Bobby is just for him to do pretty much whatever he wants to this guy. I've never trained with anybody better than Bobby in my whole career, and I've trained with a lot of high level guys. Uh, the next three years, I see him in the UFC. Uh, if he's not top 15 fighter there, he'll be there in four years from now. And then from there, he'll just be the welterweight champ in the UFC. I want him to get fights that test him every single time. Uh, no easy fights. That way, when he does get to the UFC, he doesn't just get there and he stays there. A lot of guys can get there, it's not that hard. But once Bobby gets there, you know, he's gonna be a household name, like Alex said. We all have high expectations, we're always gonna be proud of you. But, uh, don't lose.
<laughs> I mean, no last words. My last words are for the other guy. You know, keep your hands up. And I hope you really can fall back on your grapple because it's going to be one of those things he's not going to know where Bobby's going to come from. I hope that you're ready for a extremely high pace, aggressive match because that's all I bring. I don't back down and I'm always going to be in your face. So let's go ahead and have a good scrap and appreciate you taking the time to fight. Number 15, let's go.